Hey everyone, in today's short lecture we're going to talk about Joanna Russ's essay Towards an Aesthetics of Science Fiction with an eye toward Hao Jing Fang's short story Invisible Planets. I'll also introduce the first assignment for the class. Let's start with Russ's article. I think it's best to get a few basic terms out of the way. The first is right in the title of the article, Aesthetics. Aesthetics has two main meanings and they often work together. The more common usage of aesthetics refers to a system of principles for the appreciation of the beautiful. In other words, a philosophy of beauty. However, when we discuss the aesthetics of something, such as science fiction, aesthetics means the distinctive underlying principles of a work of art or a genre. We will be using the second sense of the word. However, because beauty is often considered the highest standard for a work of art, you can perhaps see how the two definitions are related. In short, in her article, Russ is attempting, note that the title of her piece is Towards an Aesthetics, not simply The Aesthetics, to establish, quote, the distinctive underlying principles of science fiction. Early in her piece, Russ lays out several points that she thinks are fundamental. Go ahead and pause for a moment to read through this quote. Russ focuses on these many points to differing degrees, but her emphasis is on the last point, namely that science fiction is inherently didactic, but that it also approaches its subjects and ideas with a sense of awe. Here she shares a lot of ideas with Darko Suvin, who you might have noticed she even quoted. Russ's contention that science fiction is inherently didactic is pretty contentious because a lot of people don't like didactic fiction. Didactic means that it, it teaches you something, that there is a moral or a lesson that the fiction is trying to impart. That's why she compares it to a lot of these medieval Christian uh, stories like Piers Plowman. People tend not to like to be lectured to, and I understand the irony. We don't like a lot of our stories to be wrapped up with an easy moral. And for that reason, many people have vehemently disagreed with this article. However, we don't have time in this class to follow the entire debate of what science fiction is. But if it's interesting to you, it might make a really interesting final project. So for now, we'll move on with Joanna Russ. Russ's claim that science fiction is inherently didactic begs the question, what is sci-fi teaching? Well, Russ argues that the theology of science fiction is right there in the name, science. She writes, It is the only modern literature which attempts to assimilate imaginatively scientific knowledge about reality and the scientific method. In fact, Russ's view of science and scientific knowledge are so fundamental to sci-fi that she compares trying to understand sci-fi without understanding modern science to trying to understand medieval Western literature without understanding Catholicism. Russ elaborates on the broader effect of this focus, the aesthetic created by this approach to sci-fi. She writes that science fiction must not offend against what is known. Only in areas where nothing is known or where knowledge is uncertain is it permissible to just, quote, make it up. Even then, what is made up must be systematic, plausible, rigorously logical, and avoid offending against what is known to be known. Here she allows for people to be wrong about the science, which is interesting, because our scientific knowledge and understanding is constantly shifting. We have proven and disproven thousands of theories in the last 20 years alone. What is important is the attempt to uphold the principles and attitude of scientific knowledge, that is, to be systematic, plausible, and rigorously logical, and to avoid offending against what is known to be known. Russ further writes that sci-fi's basic principle is, quote, the conviction that finding out or knowing about something, however impractical the knowledge, is itself a crucial good. I find Russ's idea of the aesthetics of science fiction very compelling. Where I disagree with her is in her argument that we can only truly understand science fiction literature through one particular science lens. We'll discuss this more when we talk about literary theory next week. How Jing Fang's story, Invisible Planets, pairs really well with Russ because Jing Fang's story is so clearly didactic in tone. It's clear that the narrator is trying to impart some message or meaning both to the listener or child or friend in the story, but also to us, to talk to us about our situation and our world. 
To leave Russ for a moment and return to an earlier critic, Jing Fang's story seems a perfect example of Darko Subin's notion of cognitive estrangement. Jing Fang uses terms and principles that we understand to describe far off, unimaginable worlds. In doing so, she helps us understand more about our reality. Your first assignment for this class is a close reading assignment. More on close reading in the next lecture. You will discuss one planet from the story Invisible Planets. Using textual details gained from closely reading the passage, you will answer the following two questions. First, how does the description and narrative of this planet embody what Joanna Russ explains as the aesthetics of science fiction in her essay? Second, what lesson or message is the narrator trying to impart to her audience in her description of the planet? In other words, what does the planet mean? What does the planet tell us about our human condition and world? You'll find more detailed information, including the length requirement and the assignment's due date, on Canvas. See you next time.